In this video, we look at various methods for capturing, selecting, managing and exchanging data. So when working with databases, we need to think about the data and how we handle it in four distinct ways. Capturing, so how do we get the data into the database in the first place? Selecting, how do we then query the data and retrieve it? Managing, how do we manage, manipulate, add, edit and delete the data? And exchanging, how do we exchange the data with other people and other electronic systems? So let's start with capturing the data. A vast amount of data is still captured using traditional paper-based data capture forms. Data input via this method is largely manual. It involves a human reading the form and typing the information into a computer-based system. For the process to be as fast as possible and to avoid errors, a number of tactics can be implemented when designing the data capture form. Every part of the form clearly labelled. Instructions to complete the form in a black pen. Instructions to complete the form in only capital letters, use of tick boxes and possibly squares for entering each letter separately. All these features help to reduce the likelihood that the person inputting the data will make a mistake due to the poor legibility of the text. To help speed up and automate data input, you could use Optical Character Recognition, OCR. This technology automatically reads text by interpreting the shape of the letters. Now it works far better, obviously, with printed text than handwriting. The post office uses OCR software to read postcodes and route mail, and road cameras use a form of this with automatic number plate recognition to handle congestion charging and identify drivers who are speeding. Another option is optical mark recognition, OMR. This technology is often used for multiple choice tests and lottery tickets. It's a very fast and efficient way of collecting data and inputting it into a database while significantly reducing the possibility of human error. There are hundreds of other automated ways to capture data from the real world including magnetic strips on cards, chip and pin, barcodes, QR code sensors, and many, many more. Now, once we've captured information in the database, we need an efficient way to retrieve it. A common query language for all databases is the Structured Query Language, or SQL, SQL. Developed in the 1970s, SQL allows for the fast and efficient retrieval, deletion and manipulation of data using a very simple set of commands such as select, from and where. Developed in parallel with SQL was another database query language called Query by Example or QBE. Query by Example was the first graphical query language making use of visual tables where the user would enter commands and conditions. Many of the graphical front ends of databases, such as Microsoft Access, implement ideas from query by example. Once a query is built using QBE, it is converted into statements that can be executed against the database. By utilizing QBE, the user doesn't need to remember the final details of SQL syntax. They just need to understand how to use the graphical interface. Both SQL and Query by Example allow you to specify tables, specify fields, specify different search criteria, specify how the output should be sorted, say for in ascending or descending order, and allow you to use Boolean expressions such as AND, OR and NOT. Now we also need to be able to modify data once it has been initially set up. This could involve providing easier ways to add new data, edit or modify existing data, or delete a record or some data. And you can achieve this 
via database manipulation language DML, like SQL, using commands such as update, delete and insert. Alternatively, you could use other built-in facilities of a particular database management system or piece of software. Now these database management systems that I just mentioned provide an extra layer of abstraction for the user and programmer. A DBMS hides the underlying structure of the data and ensure it remains integral by preventing the creation of duplicate primary keys, enforcing various validation rules, providing secure access and encryption, providing program data independence and handling and managing multiple users accessing the data at the same time. Finally, we need to make sure we can exchange data between different databases and other systems or applications, such as spreadsheet or accounting programs. To do this, we need to consider a few things. Are there some common formats that we could use for exchanging data? What are the manual methods of data exchange? Are there any automatic methods of data exchange? XML and JSON, which has largely replaced XML, are both human readable open formats for structuring data. They are both common standards designed for the storing and transporting of data between systems. As long as one system exports data in say JSON format, another system can accept the same data and be sure of the format that it will arrive in. A comma separated value file or CSV is another popular format for exchanging data. Each record is stored on a separate line in the file, with each field separated by a comma. As the structure is fixed and known, import routines can be written to extract the data from a CSV file. Many systems allow data to be output and imported via CSV format. Once the format for data exchange has been agreed, we still need to actually exchange the data. We also need to consider how the data will make its way from one system to another. Now, there are manual methods we could do this. We could literally put the extracted data on a memory stick, an optical drive, a removable hard disk, email it, or even import it via paper-based methods. A better method would be to bypass manual data exchange altogether and have two databases or systems talk with one another so they can read and write directly to and from each other's tables. One such live connection method is known as electronic data interchange or EDI and it's a protocol between two systems to facilitate the exchange of data. Popular uses include an automatic order placement system for when a shop stocks are running low. Now, exam boards often exchange result data with schools automatically before the data is forwarded onto UCAS and universities. On results day, a school can log on and see its exam results already present in their system. EDI is significantly increasing the speed of data transmission and the efficiency of these processes for users. This process can be entirely automated without any human involvement. Of course, we have to be careful as this also means that any error in the data could easily be populated and replicated across multiple systems. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How can data be captured and exchanged for databases?